Their buddy drove up just to see these two games. They took off after working the Miracle League game down, uh, they call it the Minnesota Miracle Field. I know you're familiar with that. You Pirates, helped, that. Hi, Pirates helped build it. Absolutely. So they drove all the way up there in the building. I'm sure a lot of Pirate fans have made all kind of arrangements to come from all kind of places to fill this ballpark up again. And what a setting. A beautiful October sky. We're by the river. We can see the skyline, and we see a jam-packed PNC Park. Great. And getting ready for Francisco Liriano to uh, take the field. And, of course, Liriano led the way uh, last Tuesday, throwing seven innings of four-hit ball. He allowed one run. He put zeros uh, on the board until the Pirates scored. They scored against the Reds in the bottom of the second inning. He had a one, two, three first. It's going to be hard for him. He's raised the bar so much here at PNC Park, Steve. It's going to be hard for him to top what he's already done. But who knows? I mean, uh, he keeps doing it. Yeah, he doesn't have to top it. If he can come close to what he did before, uh, that'll be plenty good enough. Uh, yeah, and he's the kind of guy, I and mean, he looks, I, you know, nobody knows anybody completely, but he looks completely unflappable, Greg. He goes out, he's ready to do his work. It looks like the same approach, the same way he's going out to the mound for all those starts he had with the Pirates during the regular season. And, uh, yep, all this noise going on around him, but Francisco Liriano is thinking about one thing, and that's about Matt Carpenter right now. They are taking the field. Uh, fans up and waving the black towels. And uh, Andrew McCutcheon and A.J. Burnett and Michael McHenry called for another blackout on their Twitter accounts, and the fans have responded. The Pirates, of course, wearing their black alternate jersey tops with the home white pants. Uh, the shadows right now are cast uh, across almost... Uh, the entire right side of the infield, even across Liriano and home plate. But uh, right now, in the bright sunshine, is uh, Clint Barmas, the shortstop, the third baseman, Pedro Alvarez, center fielder, Andrew McCutcheon, and left fielder, Starling Marte. They are right now in the bright sunshine, everybody else in the shade. Yeah, and I talked to Nick Leva before the ball game about that very subject, uh, Greg. Not only the sun being out, but the glare, the, the glare this time of year. It, it's different than in the summer when it... It doesn't seem to be uh, as much contrast with the sun, if, if you will. So uh, we'll see if that indeed is a factor. Uh, I remember as a pitcher, when the when the uh, shadow is, is between home plate and the pitcher's mound, that's not much fun when you're winding up. But uh, that's not a factor for Francisco right now. There's a little line between him, but that's unnoticeable. But we'll uh, wait and see what happens when the ball goes up in the air because we have seen things during the summer in the early innings, first couple innings, when, when it does become a problem. So uh, hopefully that will not be the case, especially for the Buckos. And uh, we're, we're ready to go. These uh, these folks are ready to go. This is this is fun time. It's a great time to be a Pirate fan. And this uh, season series is pretty evenly matched. The Pirates have won, including the games in the playoffs, have won 11 of the 21 meetings this year with the Cardinals. They went 7-3 and three during the regular season here against the Redbirds. Francisco Liriano in his career against the Cardinals 4 0 with a 1 16 ERA. Left handed hitting second baseman Matt Carpenter stepping in. And we're just about ready to go. Here's the windup and the pitch. And it's strike one. And Jerry Lane, home plate umpire, uh, been around a lot of years, uh, very deliberate with his strike calls, but the minute that right arm went up, you could hear it from the fans. Owen won the count. And a strike is called. It's 0-2. First pitch at 439. Game time temperature 84 degrees. Time and temperature brought to you by the park parking spot. We have airport parking covered. 0-2 on the left-handed hitting second baseman Matt Carpenter. One for eight so far in this playoff series. Here's the pitch. And it's lifted foul out of playoff to the left. And was the case last Tuesday night. Everything that the Pirates do is applauded from the start of the introductions down the left field line to everything that Liriano delivers right now. Even that foul ball, another strike, I guess, in the, in the minds of the Bucko fans. Carpenter, two for 11 lifetime against Liriano. Here's the 0-2 pitch outside. It goes to one ball and two strikes. On second baseman Matt Carpenter, who hit 318 during the season with 11 homers, and he drove in 78 runs. Very tough leadoff hitter. Here's the 1 2 pitch. Low and away. 
Two balls and two strikes to count on Carpenter. Former 13th round pick out of TCU. Carpenter will be followed by Carlos Beltran and Matt Holliday. It's two and two. Here's the windup and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. There you go. And there's your start. One up and one down. A one, pitch in the dirt. Once again, and we see it all season long. Guys swinging over the top of Liriano's breaking ball. All season long. That would have been ball three. Here is Carlos Beltran. Two for nine with a home run. In the first two games of this playoff series. Batting right-handed. Here's the pitch. And he takes a strike on the inside corner. 94 miles per hour. Beltran hit 24 homers during the regular season. He's 3 for 10 lifetime against Liriano. Here's the 0-1. And a tapper foul, and it rolls back to the backstop. Right away, we uh, get an introduction to three quality pitches from Liriano. Fastball, change, breaking ball. He calls his breaking ball a slider, but it certainly breaks a lot more than what a slider used to. So we'll call it a breaking ball and a good one. 0-2 pitch. And a dribbler toward third, and in front of the bag, Alvarez throws to first, and he got him in a pretty play by the Bull. Right in front of the third base bag. Had no time to set himself. Almost looked like he had to step on third base as he was getting ready to make his throw, but actually stepped across it, so that distraction didn't bother him as he had to take a step in back of third and then in front of third, didn't think a thing about it, and got the out. Two up and two down. You know, the one thing about Liriano, he didn't talk at all about it, but he was very much under the weather last Tuesday. Came down with a flu bug. And uh, Boy, I hope he's still yeah, bad. yeah. If he pitches that well, sick. Uh, think, think pneumonia. Think how sick he could be if he were feeling good. Yeah. Matt Holiday to the plate. Two outs, nobody on. Holiday two for eight in the first two games of the series. Right handed batter, Matt Holiday. Two outs, nobody on. And he swings and misses late at that fastball. That was up and away, and Holiday nowhere close. And if they're going to start chasing bad pitches uh, like the one that uh, that Carpenter chased, and this one by Holiday, that'll play right into Francisco's hands. Oh, one pitch is in the dirt, and it's one ball and one strike on Matt Holiday. A strikeout to start the game. Beltran chopped one in front of the third base bag. Alvarez made a nice play on it. Now it's a ball and a strike on Holiday, and here's Liriano's pitch. It's outside. And it goes to two and one. You know the old theory, if they're going to swing at pitches outside the strike zone, there's no need for you to come into the strike zone. People hit those kind of pitches. Don't come in there if you don't have to. Holiday four for ten lifetime against Liriano. The two-one pitch. Swing and a miss. Yeah, he has not thrown a strike yet, but it's two and two on Matt Holiday. And everybody up. Wow. Look at these people. Turn up the energy dial. My goodness, look at this place. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Downstairs, 3-2. and two. They're standing up. They're all in black, and they all seem to have black towels or some black. Yeah, there was material. a giveaway today, yep, yep. The, the Jolly Roger towels. And, all, they uh, all got it. And they're just using them. 3-2. and two. Here's the windup and the 3-2 pitch. Chopper, left side. Shortstop comes in. Barmas has it on to first. That'll do it. 1-2-3 again. For Liriano. We'll go to the bottom of the first inning. Game three of the best of five National League Division Series at PNC Park. Handle his first experience in postseason play in front of kind of a wild crowd. Uh, he certainly has shown his stuff against the Pirates, pitching very well against the Bucks, especially in this ballpark. So once again, Liriano, Kelly, you got to expect a lot of pitching unless you see something early in Joe Kelly that uh, uh, the nerves might be not quite be settled on his part. So we'll watch him closely, certainly. And he and his manager, Mike Matheny, and understandable to a degree, have downplayed uh, absolutely. the crowd. But if enough people saw that, Steve, that can work in reverse. Uh, the, the fans will take that as a challenge. Here they go. Yeah. Already with a Kelly chance. Right. As Starling Marte steps in. 
I mean, they think they had an impact on Cueto, so... Well, if they think that, uh, this I, is, think, I think they're wrong, but they're, they certainly are having a lot of fun with it. Starling Marte, 3 for 12 with a home run in the series. I think 40,000 people would disagree. They think... Oh, good. I'm glad they, they had do. an impact. Yeah. Well, here's the pitch. And it is a strike. But it's, it certainly but, helps when the guy makes bad pitches. Yeah. Cueto made bad pitches. Yeah. If you think they're caused by the crowd, well, hey, everybody's got an opinion. They've worked out well. Owen won the count. Here's the pitch. Marte takes inside. One ball and one strike. Now Kelly appears to be a cool customer. 6'1", 175 pounds. Third round pick in 2009. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside, 2-1. and one. There, there are a lot of people who think it's, it's maybe the situation more than a crowd at times, but uh, certainly the crowd here Tuesday night was wild. Here's the 2-1. And a drive towards center field going back as Jay to the warning track, and it'll die there as he makes the catch two steps in front of the track. Marte sent it a long way. One away in the bottom of the first. And it brings up Neil Walker. Neil Walker is 2 for 14 in the playoffs. He's 2 for 11 in his career against Joe Kelly. Now, I think my personal opinion about the Cueto thing, I think it was the accident, the, the drop ball was the accident. And I think in his mind he thought, I'm going to quiet this crowd down. I'm going to get a quick strike on Russell Martin right now. That will settle him down. I think he simply made a bad pitch. Yeah, no doubt. Pitch is in the dirt, goes back to the backstop, and they'll love that. Well, you know, now, that, if the fans think they, they caused that, great. Good for them. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. One, two, three went the Cardinals in the top of the first. Here's the 1 0. Outside. Two balls, no strikes. The count on Neil Walker. He'll hit 281 against the Cardinals this season. The 2 0 pitch. And a strike is called outside corner at the knees. Kelly 10 and 5. 269 ERA during the regular season and 37 appearances, 15 starts, 124 innings, 124 hits. He walked 44 and struck out 79. So about a 2-1 to one ratio of strikeouts to walks and there's another pitch picking up the outside corner. He gave up 10 homers in 124 innings. And opponents hit 259 against him. Well, the Pirates, in those two brilliant games he pitched, the Pirates did have action. They had base runners. They had some hits. They had some walks. And uh, that big hit just was not uh, delivered. Oh, swing and a miss. The pitch that was down and away. Walker chased. Two outs. Nothing, nothing. Bottom of the first. And it brings up Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon with five hits and 11 at-bats in the playoffs. Has walked three times. He is three out of 11 lifetime against Joe Kelly. And I would love, I love hearing them say MVP rather than Kelly. I really think it has a nicer ring. Justin Morneau on deck. And here's the windup and the pitch inside ball one. Kelly's last start was the 29th of September. Five and a third innings of three-hit shutout ball against the Cubs. And, and uh, whether or not he could be too excited, but I know the adrenaline's there. He's throwing the fastball at 97 miles an hour. Here's the 1-0. Check swing, and a strike is called. That one at 95. One ball and one strike. What? He had back-to-back -back solid starts against the Pirates September 1st here six innings one run four hits in a 7-2 victory and five days later in st louis six innings one run on eight hits in a 12-8 victory for the cardinals this breaking ball misses low and away it's two and one joe kelly out of uc riverside a third round pick in 2009 by the cardinals the the spectacled right hander 
of the Redbirds. Takes a deep breath into the windup in the 2-1 pitch. And that's outside, 3-1. and one. And you just wonder when uh, the base runners do occur, whether there will be some steal attempts because of the pitching quality that's out there today. Maybe a little bit more than usual. We'll have to wait and see. Three and one. Here's the wind in the pitch. And a strike is called outside corner. This season, uh, just three attempted steals against Kelly. Opponents were two out of three against him. And you combine that with Molina's abilities. That uh, gives you a little perspective. It's full. It's a full count now with two outs, nobody on bottom of the first. Nothing, nothing. The pitch to McCutcheon is ball four. 96 miles per hour. He walked him. And the first base runner. Maybe we'll get an early indication. That's interesting. He, oh, only three attempts, but two of them were successful. You got, you got to believe that maybe Molina didn't have as much of a chance as he might with a quicker release. Last year, 8 out of 13 were successful against Joe Kelly in his first season in the big leagues. Well, Molina, like any other catcher, has to have help from his pitcher. Justin Morneau, 4 out of 13 in the playoffs. Left-handed hitter. Here's the pitch. And that's right there for strike one. We talked to Morneau on the pregame about... His game on Friday at Bush Stadium. About uh, going the other way and successive at bats. His base hit to left center field in the third inning and scored a run and a double off the wall in left center field. His next time up and scored. 0 and 1. The pitch to Morneau. Missed away. One ball and one strike. Lefties hit 245 against Kelly. Righties hit 270 against him. Good changeup that Morneau was talking about earlier on the pregame. One ball, one strike. The right-hander of the Cardinals will step off as Justin Morneau steps out after time was called. One ball, one strike. McCutcheon at first, bottom of the first. Nothing, nothing. Here's the stretch by Kelly. And the 1-1. Up and in. And now you get into that uh, so-called, uh, on occasion, so-called, on occasion, uh, running count, two balls, one strike. Two and one. Here's the stretch by Kelly. And a swing and a miss. Morneau's first game as a Pirate was against Joe Kelly on September the 1st. He uh, grounded out, walked, and singled off of him. Two and two. Kelly working with Yadier Molina. He comes set. Here's the pitch. That's way outside. That's where uh, Molina was set up. Fastball. Missed by a considerable margin. It's now three and two. And now Matt Adams, the first baseman, will play behind Andrew McCutcheon, who will take off on this pitch. See if Morno can get a pitch to hit and find a gap. Here's the three-two. And it's a shot off of Kelly's glove. Shortstop coming on, throws and throws it past first into the seats. And the Pirates will have a runner at third base. McCutcheon uh, barely reached second there on the chopper off the glove of the pitcher. But the Pirates are going to say that he should have home. Yeah, I was wondering about that uh, when I, I saw Nick Leva actually waving him around. So. He had not gotten to second base, I think, Steve, once yeah. that throw was unleashed. Yeah. Just yeah, barely got into the bag. In fact, he stood there on the second base bag. Had, had McCutcheon just rounded second. Then he's in. Yep. Yep. But he just stood there at second, so now the Pirates have second and third with two outs. And a meeting on the mound here with Molina and the middle infielders. Single in an E6. Yep. Kelly had just slowed the ball down. And I think that's... Uh, well... 
I, Carpenter was playing up and back of second base, so th- uh, there was a chance. I was watching more what was happening with Kelly, so I don't know if that ball might have gotten through. And first might be uh, in a first and third situation, but two outs. You know, Marlon, an extra 90 feet. Marlon Bird at the plate. The stretch by Kelly. And the pitch inside. Ball one on Marlon Bird. Wow, what a chance for the Pirates to make a statement. Bird, three for 12 in the playoffs. Homered on Tuesday here in that wild card game. Here's the 1 0. Line drive, base hit into left field. McCutcheon scores. Mordo will score. Birdman singles home a pair. 2 0. And they're rocking early here. Line drive out of the reach of David Priest. And you really don't have to say much more than that because you can hear in the background. They're going berserk in the bird. Here is Pedro Alvarez. Marlon Bird now with five RBIs in the playoffs already. Alvarez has homered in back-to-back games. He is four for 15 in his career against Kelly. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike on the outside corner. Alvarez homered Thursday and Friday in St. Louis. He has become the bird bird. Bird man of the Allegheny. The 0-1 outside. And now let's go Pedro. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And a breaking ball misses. 2-1. and one. Two quick outs. And that free pass, the old walks will kill you program, bottom of the first inning. They've extended it. And Kelly's going to wind up throwing close to 30 pitches in the first frame. Here's the 2-1. Outside. Let's pause for station identification on the Pirates Baseball Network. Boy, unbelievable opportunity for Pedro. You know Kelly's going to try to throw a fastball for a strike. Swing and a miss. And he speed. And he didn't. (laughs) Off speed pitch. You got to tip your cap to him because you know Pedro is sitting on it. Change up. It's now three and two with Bird at first. Two nothing Pirates in the first. Three two pitch swing and a miss struck him out, but the Pirates get a couple. Not bad. First inning, very good. Pirates score twice and onto the second Pittsburgh two St. Louis nothing. Hi, I'm Neil Walker of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Our season starts in the... Liriano will face Molina, Fries, and Adams. Yadier Molina, three for seven in the first two games of this playoff series. He homered for St. Louis on Friday, accounting for their only run in a 7-1 loss. Hit 319 with a dozen homers during the season. And he takes strike one from Liriano. 0 for 6 lifetime against Molina. Now, Greg, we're going to have to start playing Freebird by yep. Skinner yep. when uh, Marlin comes yeah, up to the That's a great plate. call. Here's the pitch. Down low. One ball and one strike. I'm as free as a bird now. Yep. And this bird you cannot Not change. change. <laughs> one ball, one they strike. They don't want him to change a bit. Here's the pitch. And it is outside. Two and one on Molina. Two nothing Pirates. Molina 
Hit 173 against the Pirates during the regular season. A career 308 hitter against Pittsburgh. Here's the 2 1. Bouncing ball to the shortstop. Gobbled up by Barmas and on to first. Retire Molina. One down. Uh, the, the whole Liriano story is, is so good, but boy, when you just take it a couple notches further, the work he's done against the St. Louis Cardinals. And this is a very good baseball team. Very, very good. They hit all the time, especially when. When it counts, and uh, he's just been very, very impressive against him. Here's David Freeze, 0 for 8 in previous matchups against Liriano. 2 for 6 in the first two games of the series. David Freeze with one out in the second, 2 0 Pittsburgh. Liriano delivers, and a strike is called. Jerry Lane, veteran ump, the crew chief, calling the balls and strikes. Owen won the count on freeze. And Liriano delivers. And it's fouled out of play. It'll reach the club level, and that'll be a big time souvenir. Yep. Owen, too. And, Greg, how about the introductions? Uh, you know, you always listen to see who gets the biggest crowd cheer and all that sort of thing. No question that uh, what we expected when Clint Hurdle was named. Hold on here. Down so, and in, one and two. Massive cheer. But, you know, I think. I think the guy that uh, got the biggest cheer was the new stud, Garrett Cole. Oh, I mean, they were crazy. They went crazy for they him. They went nuts. I kind of liked what he did the other night. Yeah. Here's the one-two pitch. Oh, just missing. Martin held it there for an extra second or two. Two and two. Collective groan. And two balls, two strikes. Here's the wind. And the pitch fouled straight back. Big rip there from Freeze and a 95 mile per hour fastball from Liriano. Yeah, in, in these kind of situations, you want every hit, you want every play made, you want every pitch called a strike when it's your guy out there. So when you just miss, boy, the, the fans know it's close and you can just hear them. Another 2 2 pitch and another foul. Chop back to the screen. Well, it's still two and two on Freeze, hero of the NLCS and especially of the World Series two years ago for the Cardinals. Liriano with another two-two pitch, and this time he got him, a swing and a miss. Yep. Something off speed. When he's got all three pitches working, I mean he's going to win 95% of the time when he can use all three. Uh, sometimes you're searching for one, you're searching for two, you're searching. Searching for something you go down the road with till everything else kind of clicks in. But right now he's he's cooking with gas. Matt Adams steps to the plate, the left hand hitter. He's cooking with gas, slow burning charcoal. He's got the, a lot of things working. Pitch to Adams. Low and away. Adams had three hits and seven at bats in St. Louis, the first two games of the playoff series with Pittsburgh. 23-year-old rookie, 6'3", 260 pounds. Here is the 1-0 pitch to Adams, and he looks at a strike to even the count. And you know he's feeling bad because if he manages to get some kind of glove on that ball, that throw from the shortstop, you don't get that other runner in, in scoring position. It might be a one nothing game. Two runs, one earned, one unearned. In the bottom of the first, here's the 1-1. Adams chops this ball foul to the right. Now, of course, if Alan Craig were healthy, he would be... Hitting cleanup and playing first base, but Adams is the man now. And they're all up again. It's like two outs in the ninth during yeah, the regular yeah, season. That's what, yeah. Add about 30,000 fans. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Here's the one two pitch, and it's in the air to left center field. Pretty well hit, but McCutcheon with room makes the catch on the track. Six up, six down for Liriano. And after one and a half at PNC Park, it's the Pirates two, Cardinals nothing. Just that to Lance Lynn on Friday. He went four and a third, gave up five runs on eight hits as the Buccos cruised to a 7-1 win and even this series. Tomorrow, it is game four here. 307. First pitch, Charlie Morton against Michael Waka. And now Martin at the plate. Four for ten with a pair of home runs. In the postseason, hit the two homers, of course, in the wild card game here Tuesday night. 
Here's the pitch to Martin. And it's a breaking ball for strike one. Interesting. Another young pitcher with no postseason experience. But, you know, Mike Matheny got a lot of mileage out of rookie pitchers. 36 wins out of rookie pitchers. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Here's the 0-1 in the dirt. One ball, one strike on Russell Martin. Right-hand hitter, Joe Kelly. 6'1", 175-pound right-handed pitcher delivers in a strike. It's now 1-2 and two on Martin. Yeah, a lot of heat out of a, a modestly sized frame. 94 to 97 miles an hour with a fastball. The guy that's 175 pounds, that's a, that's a big arm. And... Uh, it's like uh, Jerry Lane needs perhaps some new baseballs, or was he telling the dugout to quiet down? He actually might be barking back at the dugout. I believe so. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. And that's a good pitch there, right down the middle, looked like with a breaking ball for strike three. He's not afraid to go soft when he's behind in the count or uh, when he's uh, got a situation that looks like a fastball. So Russell Martin is caught looking. Three punch outs for Kelly. And it brings up Clint Barmas. Barmas uh, did not play on Friday. Jordy Mercer was the shortstop and was one for three. And Barmas one for six. In the first of two games he's played in the playoffs, swing and a miss. Ball that darted down and in, 95 miles per hour on the ballpark gun. 0-1 on Barmas with one out and a 2-0 Pirates lead as they bat in the bottom of the second against Joe Kelly. It doesn't waste any time. Here's the windup in the 0-1. And that's strike two. Greg, we might have gone from We Are Family, which uh, worked pretty well, to uh, what, Stop Don't, don't Stop, stop Believing by Journey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the song that the uh, players there's, play there's, as the te team uh, charter lands every city. Yep, and they're, they're singing it along with the, uh, yeah. with the scoreboard now. Here's the 0-2. And a roller toward third. Freeze up with it. And on to first to retire Barmas. Freeze shuffling to his left. Cuts off the shortstop Cosma. Uh, two outs, 5-3 on the putout. And brings up Francisco Liriano. Even Liriano got into the act not only on the mound... But at the plate, he singled off of Johnny Cueto in two at-bats. How about these Pirates swinging the bat, uh, the Pirate pitchers? Cole with a huge base hit to get things going, game two. How composed did he look at, even after he gave up the home run to, to Molina, came right back and had an effective inning? Uh, he's pitching a lot more mature than 23-year-olds usually do. Pitch is taken. Low ball one. He hits left-handed, does Francisco Liriano. Here's the 1-0 pitch. And taking all the way, it's outside. Two balls, no strikes. The 2-0. Low. Three balls, no strikes. Go ahead. Walk the pitcher and extend your pitch count and take us up to the back, up to the top of the batting order. That's all right. The 3-0 pitch. Taking all the way and it's a strike as Liriano was backing out. Strike on the inner half of the plate. Liriano has had 64 at-bats in the big leagues, five hits, and he just drew a walk. A leadoff walk. Well, you mentioned the walk numbers. A leadoff, I mean a two-out walk. For uh, for Kelly. Probably a little, little higher than he'd want to have. I'm certainly not happy about that, walking the pitcher. Liriano actually walked uh, four times during the regular season. So he is on with two outs, and as Steve said, top of the order in Starling Marte, who sent John Jay back to the warning track in the bottom of the first. Pirates scored two runs off of Kelly. One was unearned. A 
And Kelly back to work from the stretch again. Adams plays behind the runner. And there's a chopper. Left side and Freeze will have it. And toss on to first to retire Starling Marte. Through two innings now at PNC Park. And still the Buck goes to Cardinals nothing. What we got was that he was telling both guys, I don't need to hear it from both of you. <laughs> from both benches. That, that was the, the indication we had. But, uh, I, I don't know that uh, Lane has been off the mark all that much. Have you seen anything uh, out of the ordinary? No, no. You know, it gets into, you know whatever you call is going to make somebody unhappy. One of those discussions, perhaps. Well, John Jay, left-handed hitter, steps in here. A 2-0 Pirate lead, third inning. Jay, one for six in this playoff series, and he takes low ball one. Now, I always go back to the, 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 the great line by Danny Murtaugh when he was discussing a home run call with John Rice, a former umpire. And, uh, and Rice told Danny after, uh, after this pitch. And it's ball. in the air, foul out of play off to the left. So John Rice said, well, Danny, if I call it the other way, they're going to argue. And Danny said, in other words, you don't want them to argue. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. I think I remember a, a scene from a, a World Series game where he was yeah. mic'd up. And he said, what the heck is that supposed to mean? Yeah, yeah. In other <laughs> words, you don't want yeah. them to umpire. Or, uh, uh, argue. Uh, argue. Strike is called. It's one and two. Yeah, it was the home run. A, a home run hit down by the Clemente down the right field line. Oh, and eventually yeah. call a foul. One ball, two strikes on John Jay. The pitch mm. just missed. A little bit off the plate. Two and two. Jay hit 400 this season against Pirates pitching. 2-2 two -two pitch. Chopper right side. Second baseman Walker to his left. Has it. Throws on to first and gets Jay. Well, that's seven up and seven down to start this game for Liriano. And now he faces Pete Cosma, who's had a world of trouble previously against Liriano. 0 for 9 with five strikeouts. Cosma hit 217 during the regular season. A former first round pick by these Cardinals. Daniel Descalzo started it short in the first two games of the series against right handed pitchers A.J. Burnett and Garrett Cole. Descalzo, a left handed hitter. And the pitch now to Cosma. And this is inside ball one. And, you know, just a little more breakdown of, of the pitches for Liriano. During the season, approximately 42% fastballs, 36% breaking balls, 22% uh, changeup. So that's a great distribution. So you've got to have all three of them working. 1-0 is lined toward left. Coming in is Marte, and he I don't think he saw that he ball. He did not. That ball drops, and here's Cosma headed to second, and he's there. And Marte, a little bit of a blunder there. Not only did he let it drop in front of him because maybe he had trouble seeing it but he didn't get that ball in with any urgency and Cosma took advantage yep. he's got to get that ball and get it in absolutely absolutely. didn't see it you can understand that to a degree but then you've got to recover as quickly as you possibly can very very casual yep. pursuit of the ball after it bounced in front of him well, Cosma takes advantage of that and that doesn't come up as an error but it certainly is a, a mental mistake. And now Joe Kelly at the plate. Kelly hit 152 during the season. And he takes ball one. So the first indication about that glare uh, having a big impact on Marte. That's a ball that he has in his back pocket on any night here. He's got but the glove up in front of his face again. Here's the pitch. Kelly lines this foul off to the right out of play. And he's the only one with a glare factor, and now it's moved away from Andrew McCutch, and the infielders are fine. It's, uh, and it's not going to be much more than another inning, but uh, well, let's hope the Pirates can escape without that not hurting. Without that hurting at all. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Liriano is a handful for everybody, but especially a pitcher trying to hit because he's got those three pitches he can throw you. A lot of pitchers just like to sit on a fastball, but Liriano is uh, pretty comfortable with all three. And that's why those numbers are are, are uh, flushed out the way they are with a changeup having a lot of, a lot of ticks. 
Swing and a miss at a pitch in the dirt. They'll have to throw to first to complete the strikeout. Martin does that. A quick look towards second before he does. And that's a strikeout. It goes 2-3. Cosma still at second with two outs. So I guess there, uh, if uh, Kelly had Cosma at first and one out, they try and bunt him to second. And that's where he would be now if, if a sacrifice had worked. And it brings up Matt Carpenter. Carpenter struck out to lead off the ball game. Left hand hitting second baseman, Matt Carpenter. 2 0 Pirates, third inning. Liriano looks towards second. The pitch to Carpenter. Check swing, strike call. Good fastball inside part of the plate. Sets up the bat for the pitcher. Now he's established a little presence in there. Now he can go away. Maybe the guy won't dive out as much or as quickly. Oh and one. Liriano with the pitch. Hits him. He hits Matt Carpenter and it brings up Carlos Beltran with two on and two outs in the third, and the Pirates leading two to nothing. Well, certainly no uh, discussion at all about intent there with Beltran coming up, as you said. But now, of course, you, you remain in that conversation, and it always comes up whenever the Cardinals get somebody in scoring position. What a great job they've done all year. So that's been well documented. And this guy, it's been well documented what he has done in his career in the month of October. He's been great. Beltron hit 374 with runners in scoring position this season. Here's the pitch. He takes low and away, ball one. He bounced out to Alvarez right in front of the third base bag in the first inning. He's now 3 for 11 lifetime against Liriano. Beltron hit 252 as a right handed hitter. 315 from the left side this season. Two on, two outs, two nothing Pirates in the third inning. Here's the pitch to Beltron. And a line drive left field. That's a foul ball mm. by about three feet. That at least brings home Cosma. You have Carpenter off with any contact with two outs. One, uh, one ball and one strike to count now. Who was it that hit that long foul uh, Tuesday night against the Pirates? Uh, Frazier, the fourth inning against Liriano. That yep. could have been a game changer. This ball in the dirt, the block by Martin. He can't find it. Now he does, and the runner will break for third without a throw. It uh, is a wild pitch and somehow trickled out in front of the dirt circle under the grass. I think Martin, in his scramble to find it, actually kicked it. Right on the front edge of the plate. And, and he went down the ball kicked off of him and rolled in front of the plate so it's a wild pitch with runners at first and third two and one on Beltron Matt Holliday on deck Liriano two one pitch swing and a miss went soft again and that change up that we've always heard so much about with Liriano coming into play right there. That belt on well out in front. And once again, everybody on their feet here. Standing and waving. Two and two, two on, two out. Beltron bats here for the Cardinals in the third inning. Liriano sets the 2-2 pitch in the dirt. A full count on Carlos Beltron. Always dangerous any situation, but especially with men in scoring position and especially in the playoffs. And certainly no guarantee that he's going to see a fastball here. He could, but no guarantee. Three and two. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Chop foul at the plate. And away from the fastball. Beltron went to his eighth All-Star game this season. Was the starting right fielder for the National League. Led the Cardinals in homers.
Three and two, the count. Miriano with a pitch. Chopper foul rolls back toward the on-deck hitter, Matt Holliday. Just off the end of the bat. And a, a late protective swing by Beltron again with something away from the fastball. That, that could be two or three straight changeups he's yeah. thrown to Beltron. 22% of pitches through the course of a season is a very, very high number. Very high number. Another 3 2 pitch in the dirt, and the bases are loaded. Beltron walks. Moving Carpenter to second. And it brings up Matt Holliday. Well, Holliday bounced out in the first inning to the shortstop Barmas. He has four hits in 11 career at bats against Francisco Liriano. Like Beltran, very dangerous. 94 RBIs on the year for Holiday with 22 homers. Cosma at, at third, Carpenter at second, Beltran at first. Pirates lead two to nothing with two outs. From the stretch, Liriano delivers. Swing and a miss. Of, didn't want to, but did swing by Holiday. That could be your fourth straight changeup. And we told you that the glare still exists for Marte, but also you've got a pretty significant trailing wind coming across, helping balls going to left center and left field. So existing conditions, that glare will go away, but I don't know about the breeze. Like Beltron, very dangerous with men in scoring position. The 0-1 is in the air to right field. Bird going back to the warning track at the wall, makes the catch. Line drive caught by Marlon Bird, two steps shy of the wall. The Cardinals leave the bases loaded. Well, you, you wonder sometimes what happens in a dugout after a player kind of makes a mistake like that. And I think that one might be so obvious. I, I don't know if you need to say anything. It uh, certainly cost the Pirates 90 feet, but they did cover it. Ground ball to first. Easy play for Matt Adams. Retires Neil Walker. One pitch, one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Brings up Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon walked and scored in the first inning. Too bad we don't have Michael Jackson around to say, don't stop till you get enough. Yeah. <laughs> you got two, that's good. More would be better. Pitch in there for a strike on McCutcheon. The 0 1. Hello. One ball, one strike. And the pitch is a base hit into center field for Andrew McCutcheon. Getting on base a lot in the playoffs. Continuation of the regular season. He is now six. For 12 plus four walks in the postseason. Well, they've already voted for the MVP. But this, will, this will just make the guys that voted for McCutcheon feel a lot better about themselves. Yes. <laughs> well, not that it, McCutcheon isn't absolutely deserving. And you talk to enough people, you get the impression he's got a real good shot of winning the MVP. That will be announced after the postseason. Justin Morneau at the plate reached on. The infield single and move to second on an air. There's a throw to first base, and McCutcheon dives back safely. Pirates scoring two runs in the first inning. One was unearned thanks to a Pete Cosma error. And do you think that Andrew can worry Kelly enough to make a mistake upstairs to Morneau? Wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. Here's the pitch. Here's a line drive. Going to be a double play. To first base as McCutcheon tries to dive back, but Adams reaches behind him and tags McCutcheon just as he is diving back to the bag. A line drive DP3 unassisted. And after three, Tim Nevert will come in. Call the middle three innings here at PNC Park. It's the Pirates 2, Cardinals nothing. Hi, I'm Neil Walker. This season's been filled with twists and turns. And Wait for national television to come back from their timeout. 
And now we're ready to go. As Liriano, the big lefty, will get set to deliver his first pitch to Yadier Molina. The wind and the pitch. And Molina fouls it back for strike one. This crowd has been hanging on every pitch all game long. Molina has not had a hit in seven at bats in his career against Liriano. Here's the pitch. And that is a little bit low. One ball and one strike. A lot of uh, traffic on the Allegheny River today. Lots oh, of boats out there. Armada. A, a glorious <laughs> early October Sunday afternoon. Yeah, this is Indian summer is at its best. 1-1 one, one pitch and Molina line shot right into the glove of Barmas for the out. One out for St. Louis in the top of the four. And that's when you're going good, too. Bases loaded. Holiday nailed the ball to right field, but it was right at Marlon Bird. This one smoked right at Clint Barmas. Sometimes you just need a little luck. Well, David Freeze will come up, the third baseman. He struck out swinging in the second inning. 0 for 1 today. Here's the wind by Liriano and the pitch. And Freeze lines it to right field and deep. Going back after it. Bird, he's on the track. He makes the catch. And yep. there are two gone. Another ball. Smoke. at a pirate defender. You can't beat a good bird in the outfield. Well, Marlon Bird is very, very sound fundamentally. The way he makes his first step, breaks back on a ball, does all the things right. And now Matt Adams is the hitter. Let him hit a ball hard right at somebody. Get him a little frustrated. We've had two good swings, two quick outs. Pirates in a shift for Adams. Big left-handed hitter out of Slippery Rock, and he takes a strike. Walker out in short right field. Barmas is on the first base side of second. Morno playing deep at first, and Pedro Alvarez shortstop but shading the bag. Here's the pitch, and that is just outside for a ball one and one. Kind of, kind of neat before the game, Tim, to see Kevin McClatchy throw out the first pitch. He got a great round of applause. Yes, and he should. That was a classy thing for the Pirates to do. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Adams takes again outside and low. Two balls and a strike. A lot of people feel like uh, we might not be in this ballpark. There's some that feel that the Pirates not, might not be in Pittsburgh. And those people all feeling that Kevin McClatchy had a lot to do with that. Two outs, bases empty. The 2-1 pitch to Adams. Up high for a ball, and Liriano falls behind in the count. Three balls and a strike. Three and one to Adams. Liriano left on left matchup. Adams hit the ball to center field his last time up, caught up to by McCutcheon in front of the bullpens. Here's the 3 1. And a ground ball slowly hit towards second. Here's Barmas with it. Throws on to first, and he gets him. Liriano retiring the side in order. One, two, three go the Cardinals in the top of the fourth inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth in game. Yep, and Joe Kelly so far has survived the wrath of the Kelly chance, but you get one pirate runner on, they'll start again. That simple. Game four of this best of five series tomorrow afternoon, 3.07, the first pitch. We'll be on the air at 2.40 with the Trip Total Media Pirates pregame show. And if you think this is loud, if the Pirates hold on and win this game, a chance to wrap it up tomorrow, well, dig your heels in. Here's the pitch to Bird. He takes inside ball one. And there's a lot of work to be done between now and then, but if that does happen, this city will be dizzy tomorrow. <laughs> one ball and no strikes to Marlon Bird. Kelly gets the sign. The right-hander winds, kicks, and comes home. And Bird a cut and a miss and a breaking ball. And it's one and one. Well, one game at a time. Oh, yeah. Pirates have to play yeah. this one game at a time. Clint Hurdle has been preaching that since April 1st. Well, yeah, and they've been talking that way for about 100 years, too. So that's, yeah, it's, it's there, and it means it. One one, and Bird skies this one foul down the right field side, well up into the seats. But tomorrow, Charlie Morton scheduled to go 7-4 and four in the regular season. He'll face rookie Michael Waka. Waka 4-1. and one. That's the pitching matchup tomorrow. The probables for tomorrow. And the 1-2 on the way. And Bird hits one on the ground of the second baseman, Carpenter. He scoops it up, fires on to first for the out. 
And there was one gone for the Pirates in the bottom of the fourth inning. And for an inside scoop on all things Pirates, follow the official Pirates Twitter account at Pirates. Also, like us on Facebook for more information on everything Pirates. Get connected today. Well, Tim, I've not heard any discussion about any adjustment by Mike Matheny about a starter tomorrow should the Pirates win this game and, and maybe be a little nervous about having a rookie out there. His rookie pitchers have done a great job. We're talking about the 36 wins for the Cardinal first-year pitchers. So, uh, I have not heard any other options discussed. However, you never know. Well, Pedro out the plate to the chance of let's go, Pedro. Pedro Alvarez homering in back-to-back -back games in the postseason. Homered in games one and two. Became the first Pirate since Willie Stargell in 1974 to homer in back-to-back -back postseason games. 1-0 pitch. Pedro takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. It's one and one. I would have guessed Bob Robertson. He had six or seven in that 71 postseason. Basket full of them. But not uh, totally surprising. Willie... Stargell's name comes up in a lot of these discussions. Pops was uh, able to hit home runs in games three and four of the NLCS in 74 against the Dodgers. Pitch outside for a ball. It's two and one. In their first three postseason games this year, coming into today, the Pirates have hit six home runs. Only two other years the Bucks have had more. As Pedro watches one in the dirt go to the backstop, three and one. And uh, when you talk about home runs, the Cardinals have not hit a home run in this ballpark since August of 2012. Right. That's amazing. Matt Holliday had the last home run here. August 27th, 2012. They have not hit a home run here this year. Cardinals. And Mr. Kelly's name being uh, mentioned here by 40,000 plus. Alvarez swings and misses. It's a full count, three and two. And the Pirates had seven home runs during their world championship year in 1979 in the postseason. And a club record 13 in their world championship season of 1971. Most welcome, those long balls. Payoff pitch. And Pedro swings and strikes out. And Alvarez is gone on strikes for the second time in the game. Four for Mr. Kelly. 0 for 2 for Pedro. Russell Martin struck out looking. Took a curveball right down the middle last time up. In fact, he struck out. Didn't get the bat off the shoulders. Now Russell waits at the plate. Nobody on. Two men out. The pitch. And he chops this one foul. That is caught by Jeff Bannister, the bench coach. He turns around and tosses it up into the seats over the dugout. Nothing and one. The count to Russell Martin. Who made a few friends last Tuesday night? He did. A couple of home runs. He sure did. He is three for five in his career against Kelly. Here's the pitch. He takes the breaking ball again for a strike. And it's 0-2 quickly. So we've seen Kelly get ahead of Martin and then throw him the breaking ball. The one thing that Clint Hurdle talked about today was making sure to... Get the fastball when you can get it because the changeup is very effective. And the fastball up high, too high at 96 miles an hour. One and two. But the bottom can fall out of the baseball sometimes if Kelly delivers the changeup correctly. And so you look at three pretty quality pitches from him like you do with Francisco. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck out Martin. Three up and three down for the Pirates. Two punch outs. We'll go to the fifth inning at PNC Park. This is game three of the best of five National League Division Series. The score was loaded two out jam when Matt Holliday ended up lining out to Marlon Bird in right field. But it'll be the bottom part of the order to face Liriano in the fifth. John Jay, Pete Cosma, and the pitcher Joe Kelly. Jay bounced out to Neil Walker to start that third inning. So he is 0 for 1. And, and this is a kind of an opportunity. You're, you're pitching a, a very good ball game. You don't have a lot of run support, but you haven't get up any runs in four innings. Now, the number eight guy will be critical. Here's the pitch to John Jay. That's up high for a ball. Left-handed hitting center fielder. And normally during the course of the season, we had seen Shane Robinson, a right-handed hitter, bat in these situations against left-handed pitching for the Pirates. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one, but... 
Matheny going with Jay. Jay has had a little more success in the postseason. This is his third postseason last year in the division series against Washington. He had a few RBIs. He had three of them. Takes a pitch outside, and it's two and one. But he has a little more experience in these games. Oh, the pitch. And that's on the outside edge for a strike call, two and two. Over the hump kind of inning. Nice to be working to the bottom third of the batting order. No guarantees, but nice setup for you. Two balls, two strikes. No one on. Here's the pitch. And it's low. Full count, three and two. Pirates winning game two, seven to one on Friday after dropping the opener Thursday, nine to one. Some of the series even at a game apiece. 3 2 pitch. And Jay hits one on the ground, left side of base hit. Just the second hit off of Liriano, but the leadoff man is aboard. And that's the first real, hate to say legitimate, because Cosmos was legitimate, but Marte lost it in the sun. So it's the first hit without the aid of the sun off of Liriano. And a nice job of hitting by Jay, going the opposite way, not trying to pull that ball, finding the hole between third and short. Kind of pushing the ball that way. You know, the Cardinals have been to the postseason a lot, 10 of the last 14 seasons, and they've been in the division series quite a bit. Lead from first by Jay, stretched by Liriano. He throws to first. And in game numbers two in division series, after winning game one, the Cardinals had been 6-0, and had not lost a game two after winning game one until Friday when the Pirates beat them. So that was the first time they dropped the second game of a best of five in the division series. Here's the pitch. Cosma shows bunt, pitch outside. One ball, no strikes. Well, here's certainly, again, that, that number eight guy can be a pivotal kind of a guy. He is in this situation. You get beyond him, and yeah, the, the, the pitcher will try to sacrifice, but if he does, that's going to cost the Cardinals the second out and put you one out away from getting out of the inning. You lose this guy, and then you uh, you set up a thing with the pitcher moving them over with just one out. Oh, and here's the man you want to get. Throw to first base, and John Jay is back. Well, if anybody's going to run for the Cardinals, it'll be John Jay. Led the team in stolen bases with 10. And uh, he's got a big hole between Walker and... And Morno on the infield. 1-0 pitch to Cosmo. Swing and a foul back in the count. Even one ball and one strike. And let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Pirates Baseball Network. So Cosmo waits at the plate. One ball, one strike. Stretched by Liriano, the pitch. That's low for a ball. Blocked by Russell Martin. Jay stays put at first base. Cosma this season with runners on base at 270. But he had his struggles with nobody on. He hit just 178 with nobody on base. And that's why Descalso ended up getting more playing time toward the end of the season at shortstop. Cosma a better defensive shortstop. 2-1 pitch to Cosma coming. Throw to first instead. And it's two and one count. They think that Jay may be thinking about heading toward second base. Again, there's that big separation between Pirates first, base, first baseman and second baseman. Pirates a 2 nothing lead. Top of the fifth. Nobody out. One on the pitch. Outside, and it's 3-1, and one, and Liriano falling behind. Pitcher Joe Kelly on deck. You know, almost sense a little nervous anticip anticipation in the crowd, wondering what's going to happen. How can we get out of this 3-1 count? As a team this year, the Cardinals with only 45 stolen bases. Starting Marte almost had that himself. Pitch up high, ball four. Now the tying run is aboard. Nobody out for the Cardinals. And now with the sacrifice situation, if Kelly puts one down, he'll put the tying run in scoring position with one out for the top of the order. And one of the best doubles men in baseball, Matt Carpenter, waiting on deck. Five sacrifice bunts for Kelly during the regular season. Again, he wasn't part of the rotation for quite a while. More work out of the bullpen until he got into the rotation later on. And Ray Sarah's going to go out and have a conference. 
like the invitations for the conference went to Pedro Alvarez, Morneau, and Martin, and now late calls to join the group for Walker and Barnes. Well, last time that Liriano got into trouble, it was the third inning. He ended up with a bases loaded situation after he hit Matt Carpenter with a pitch and then walked Carlos Beltran to follow that up. And now, most assuredly, you would think that you're going to see Carpenter and perhaps Beltran as well this inning. Beltran, one of the best producers in October. So, Liriano needs a ground ball here somewhere playable, trying to get two, and get Carpenter to the plate. Mm-hmm. Middle infield plays for two. Alvarez in on the cut of the grass at third for Kelly. Kelly squares to bunt. Here's the pitch, and the pitch is low for a ball. One ball and no strikes. John Jay is the runner at second base. Pete Cosma, the free pass at first. And uh, if they move up and uh, you get an out out, if they give you an out, you always take the out you can get. But just don't fool around and uh, get in the hole too deeply against Kelly. 1-0 pitch. He left the bat out there and couldn't make contact. That's a strike, 1-1. One and one. That's almost like a flinch. He's got the bat there and... Like a twitch. One ball and one strike. Pirates with two runs in the first inning and a two-run single by Marlon Bird. What you'd like here is get him, get the bat underneath the ball, pop it up on this bunt attempt. And the one-one. And Kelly again misses on the bunt attempt. That's strike two. Another little lunge. They left the bat out there second time in a row now. Third base coach Jose Kendall will call him down and will uh, almost look like on the TV camera had the, the camera on those two. We'll bunt the ball. <laughs> and now the chance of Kelly Kelly again by the amassed crowd dressed in black. This would be huge if Francisco can get him. And the stretch now, the one two. And he spins away out of an inside fastball at 93. That's a ball, two and two. Joe Kelly wears glasses when he pitches and does not when he hits. Well, that explains those two lunges at the bunt attempts. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Two on for the Cardinals. Pirates a 2-0 lead. Liriano's pitch. Kelly squares, puts the bunt down and foul ground, and he strikes out. That's all right. There you go. Well, runners have to go back to first and second. They were off. Huge right there. That is huge. Got to circle around that. If the Pirates continue on and hold on and win this ball game, you might come back to that matchup. Kelly not able to get the bunt down. Well, the bunt went straight down and then went in back of home plate. And that's where Russell Martin fielded it behind home plate and foul ground. And as soon as he touches it, it makes that ball dead and he's out. So now Carpenter at the plate. 0 for 1. He struck out of the first, hit by a pitch in the third inning. He had a, a book rule strikeout. Yeah. Here's the pitch. And Carpenter takes low. Pitch at 89 miles an hour. Most of the room they give Carpenter in the outfield, left center field. Marte over a little bit toward the line. Not a lot. Pretty well spaced out. Give him the line down the right field line. Carpenter, a career year, 318. 11 homers, 78 runs batted in. He had 55 doubles, led the league in multi-game hits, or multi-hit games, I should say. And he takes low, two balls and no strikes. He had 63 multiple-hit games. Andrew McCutcheon was next in the National League with 60 of them. A white-knuckle time here midway through the ball game. Top of the fifth inning, one out. Pirates up 2-0. Cardinals have the tying run aboard. One out. 2-0 the count to Matt Carpenter. Liriano's kicking the pitch. And Carpenter takes up high, and it's 3-0. And he's a pitch away from loading the bases for Carlos Beltran. And, you know, you look at uh, what you're what you're facing in the top of the fifth inning, and we mentioned, you know, it's nice to be looking at the bottom third of the batting order, but, again, no guarantees, and it certainly hasn't turned out to be a breeze. Yeah, this series, Carpenter 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position, but he was well over 300 during the course of the season in that category. The 3 0, and that's in for a strike. Good solid fastball at 94. 
Carpenter hitting into only four double plays all year. Well, you and, take and one right here if you had yeah, to. And that's covering 626 at bats coming into the game. Carpenter left-handed hitter with an open stance. He looks out at Liriano. The three-ball, one-strike pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. The count is full. Francisco working himself back into the at-bat. Everybody's up. Everybody's standing, waving the towels. What a sight. Yep, they're not waiting for two outs here. It's necessary to pull out all the stops in this one-out situation. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Jay at second base, Cosma at first. And the stretch by Liriano. Here comes the payoff pitch. Runners go. Strike three, call, throw down to third, safe at third. Couple of inches away from a strike him out, throw him out. But a double steal for the Cardinals as Carpenter strikes out. And expecting him to make contact, they turned him loose. Second time Carpenter's gone down on strikes. And John Jay with a big jump off of second base, just barely beating the throw of Russell Martin. The throw was in foul ground. It was not over the bag. Had it been right on the bag, they had a chance to get him. Now with two outs and the tying run at second, here's Carlos Beltran. And he takes it inside. Beltran in game one hit a three-run homer in the 9-1 Cardinal win. And that was his 15th postseason home run. Well, we just saw a TV yeah. replay. Jay was out. And he overslid the bag. If Pedro left the glove on him, he would have been out twice. Wow. So that throw was good. Yep. It was a bad call at third by Paul Nart. And the 1-0. And that is just inside. Two balls and no strikes. And to give you an idea, historical perspective on Carlos Beltran, his 15 postseason home runs has tied him with Babe Ruth for eighth on the all-time postseason home run list. Pretty good company. What an exclusive club. 272 average against Liriano for Beltran. He's ahead of the count 2-0, the pitch. It's in the dirt, three balls and no strikes. So it looks like we're heading for another situation with the bases loaded, two outs to Matt Holliday. Open base. Are they going to finish it off here now? Uh, Clint Hurdle on the phone to the bullpen. Looks like the bullpen's going to get activated here momentarily. Are they going to? They're going to throw a pitch to him and do not assume he's taking the pitch on the way, and it's fouled back. It's three and one. So Beltron had the green light, and he went after the changeup and fouled it back. Then Mazzaro has now. Climbed on top of a mound in the Pirate bullpen and started the throw. Second and third, two down, three balls, one strike. Here's the pitch to Beltron. Swung on and a ground ball toward the middle. That's through for a hit. Jay will score. Cosmo around third, and the ball game is tied. It's two to two. Carlos Beltron comes up big in October again. Nothing special, bouncing ball, but. That was not one of the atom balls we saw the Cardinals hitting earlier in the game. And this one makes it way through into center field. An easy trip in from second base for Cosma. Well, Beltran with a 353 career postseason average. Just had his 48th postseason hit. And both right fielders getting it done. Bird. Beltron. And now two down. Matt Holiday pops this pitch up. Shallow right field. Walker backpedaling. Bird calls him off. And Bird will make the catch. A batter too late. Cardinals get two runs on two hits. One man left. Middle of the fifth at PNC Park in game three of the National League Division Series. To Pete Cosman. That's what hurt Liriano. Yep. So Clint Barmas will lead off against Joe Kelly. Liriano's scheduled to hit next, but he's not in the on-deck circle. And Marte will be after that, so 8-9-1. and one. Pirates hoping to get something done in the bottom of the fifth inning, get that lead back. Right-hander Joe Kelly looks in at Barmas, the right-handed hitting shortstop. Pitch outside for a ball. Came with a fastball at 93. Kelly wanted that one, didn't get it.
Kelly appeared in seven games in the postseason last year. So postseason, nothing new for him. Barmas drives one into center field, a base hit. A leadoff single for Clint Barmas. Good idea for Clint Barmas. Just fisting that ball up, not trying to pull it. Just hitting it over the head of Carpenter, and that sets up the Liriano sacrifice bunt. That's Pirates right back in order, right so back in business. For that number eight hitter to get on in front of the pitcher with nobody out. And Barmas has done just that. So the Pirates have the potential go ahead run at first base. Bottom of the fifth, two to two. Four hits for the Pirates, three for the Cardinals. Well, let's hope Liriano is better at this than Kelly was. Uh, Kelly struck out trying to bunt in the top of the inning. So Liriano, left handed batter. David Freeze creeping in from third. Liriano bunts it up the first base side. Kelly makes the play and looks briefly at second base. Throws on to Adams covering. Nicely done. Successful sacrifice bunt for Francisco Liriano. And that puts Clint Barmas into scoring position at second base. Doing your job. Bunting it kind of firmly, but Kelly uh, taking the shore out. It's been very risky to try to go to second base. Starling Marte up for the third time. He's 0 for 2. First time up, he flied out deep to center field and bounced out to third base in the second inning. Barmas leads from second base. Second baseman Carpenter shading the bag. Now he'll move over a few steps to his glove side. Here's the pitch from Kelly out of the stretch, and it's up, up in the zone, apparently. It's called a strike, but that was pretty high. Well, nothing in one to Marte. Yeah, I have to give Jerry Lane a little moment. He's quite deliberate with that right hand. No balls and one strike. The pitch. And Marte waves and misses at a ball that darted down and out of the zone. And Kelly getting in front of Marte. Nothing in two. And what you always like to do if you give up a couple, get at least one back in the bottom of that inning. Your next opportunity. Just takes a little sting out of it. 0-2 pitch coming. And it's outside. Trying that down and out pitch again. It's one ball and two strikes. 40,489 record attendance today. By two. Two more people in here today than on Tuesday for the wild card game. 40,489. One out, one on. The stretch look at second. Now the pitch. And Marte takes outside. Ball gets away but blocked. Blocked and kept in front by Yadier Molina. So Barmas can't go anywhere. And those two people, second. those two people, Tim, a high school buddy of mine and his friend drove up from Bradenton. Did they? It, yeah. So they made the record today. Yeah, they, they did. They made the record. Uh, one of Ken Herring, a high school buddy, uh, does a lot of work with the Miracle League folks. He's a manager down there that uh, the Pirates had a lot to do with building that field, being involved with the Orioles. Yep. They made the difference. Two and two to Starling Marte. Crowd getting on Joe Kelly again. The right-hander looks at second twice, now comes to the plate, and Marte looks at a breaking ball again for ball three. Good take, good discipline. Hard pitch to take. Two-strike situation. Count Don't want to give run up, run up. Count is full to Marte. Neil Walker on deck. Two to two the score. Bottom of the fifth inning. Pirates a man at second. That's Clint Barmas. He had a leadoff single. Liriano sacrificed in the second. Payoff pitch from Kelly. And Marte pops it up. Right side, foul ground, playable for Matt Adams. Drifts onto the warning track in front of the dugout, makes the catch. And Marte is gone, and there are two away. Well, two outs for Neil Walker. Went up and had a first pitch ground out to Adams in the third inning. He struck out looking in the first. So Neil looking to be more productive. He took an 0 for 5 in game two and an 0 for 4 in game one. So Neil does not have a hit in this series. He had two hits in the wild card game against the Reds, but so far he is 0 for 11 against the Cardinals. And the pitch, and Walker takes a strike. Something off speed, little movement on it, came right over the heart of the plate. 125 in the postseason. 
Walker during the regular season hit 251. Nothing and one the count. Two down. Barmas at second. Kelly delivers. And Walker hits this one foul down the third base side and up into the seats. And he falls behind 0-2. And, and Kelly has been able to get in front of the Pirate hitter since getting into trouble early in the ball game. He has come back and has not faced more than four hitters in an inning since that first inning. And he's mixing in his fastball very nicely with that off-speed curveball. Good separation and speed. He's thrown a couple change-ups, but I think he's mostly leaning on that difference. The fastball, the lively fastball, still up in the mid-90s. Oh, two pitch. He's hit on the ground right side. Adams will play it on the hop. He'll step on the bag, and the Pirates leave a man at second. We're through five full at PNC Park, heading to the top of the sixth. Pirates two, Cardinals two. And Wilson is now throwing. They had Mazzaro up a four, right-hander. Now Justin Wilson has taken over. Mazzaro has sat down. I'm sure there's kind of a plan in place who you're going to use in what particular inning, and maybe if you get past that inning, the, the uh, cast changes a little bit, personnel adjustments. Well, Yadier Molina checked his swing. They appeal down to first. Umpire Sam Holbrook said he didn't go, so it's ball one to Molina. Two to two. Top half of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. And that's in for a called strike. One ball and one strike to Molina. Molina so far today is 0 for 2. Last time up, he hit the ball pretty hard. Right on the nose, but right at Clint Barmas. He's also grounded out to Barmas. 0 for 2. Swing and a miss. And now Liriano ahead of Molina, 1 and 2. He has really leaned on that changeup today. Really leaned on it. That's that 86, 87 mile an hour changeup as opposed to 92, 93 on the fastball. And Molina pokes this one to shallow right field, waiting for it as Bird. He makes the catch. And Molina's 0 for 3, one down in the sixth. And so important to get that leadoff, man. Get that first out and keep the bases empty. Yep, back to back to him with the changeup again. And we were talking to those percentages, uh, Tim, what he does with fastball curve and changeup. And 22% is a pretty hefty number during the course of a season. And that's because it's that good. So that uh, that just bears out three quality pitches. David Freeze, the third baseman standing in, right-handed batter. He takes up high for a ball. Looked like the same exact pitch in the same exact location that was called a strike on Marte last half inning. Freeze fists this one foul over the first base dugout. Now the count even one and one. Ball and a strike to Freeze. Freeze struck out in the second inning, went down swinging, then lined to right in the fourth. These patterns that you pitch with can change. Right now he's using the fastball to set up the off-speed pitch. There's a ball that misses downstairs. Two and one to the Cardinal third baseman. When the pitcher, when a pitcher can get a lot of outs with off-speed pitches, it just almost looks like he's toying against the lineup. Get awkward swings, guys out in front. Two one, and Freeze takes another one in the dirt. So two straight pitches have bounced in front of home plate. And the count extends to three balls and one strike. Liriano, for the most part, when he misses, misses downstairs. And when he's on, he gets a lot of swings over top of borderline pitches down in that neighborhood. 3-1 delivery. And this one is hit in the air to left field. Marte on the run. He'll make the catch. A line drive out there to left center field. And Marte got behind it for the second out. Francisco got the atom ball working. Well hit balls at Pirate Defenders. It's good. Doesn't matter how it's how many. It's in a lot of sports. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how. It is how many. Well, Matt Adams, big left-handed slugger, first baseman. He shows bunt. The shift is on where Pedro Alvarez is playing the shortstop position and shading the bag. And there's all kinds of room on the left side of the infield. Adams was looking to find his way on base, apparently, shortened up, or at least to keep the defense honest. He swings, hits a two hopper to Barmas. He drops it, picks it up, fires on the first to get it. Three up and three down for the Cardinals in the sixth. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth in game three of the National League Division Series at PM. It's in the other National League Division Series in Los Angeles. The Braves playing the Dodgers. Julio Tehran against Hunjin Ryu. A couple of rookies going at it. 
in that series. So here's the pitch to McCutcheon. Way outside for ball one. And Kelly still dealing at 95 miles an hour. One and oh, the count. Here's the wind and the pitch to Kutch. He will take low for ball two, two and oh. Pirates certainly would like a base runner. He would like a base runner with nobody out. Now, the left hander, Justin Wilson, has sat down for the Pirates, and the other lefty, Tony Watson, is now up and throwing. Here's the 2 0. And McCutcheon will take ball three. Well, you saw the sequence in terms of the bullpen work. It was going to be Mazzaro if he was needed earlier. And it might have been uh, with uh, Justin Wilson. And now it's Watson as you get into that program, 7, 8, and 9. It's been kind of evolving into that Watson, Melanson, Grilly. And the three ball, no strike pitch from Kelly. Swung on and fouled off the foot of McCutcheon. Rolled all the way out in fair territory to freeze at third. But it's foul ball and the count is... Three and one. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID on the Pirates Baseball Network. A couple of green lights. First of all, with Beltron, and then right there with McCutcheon. 3 1 pitch. It's way inside ball four. Cuts drops the bat and bails out. But the Pirates have a base runner with nobody out for Justin Morneau. Uh, the fans are booing, but Joe Kelly's certainly not wanting to throw at Andrew McCutcheon. Trust me on that. And now they're getting on Kelly again. Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. They want to see if they can intimidate him. Also, they don't like him throwing next to our man, Andrew. Morno one for two. He singled and scored in the first. And the first pitch to him is a fastball outside. And now the Cardinal bullpen's activated. Seth Maness, a right-hander, starting to throw. Oh, you'd love to see Morno run into one. And they go crazy. Would get the monkey off his back. He still does not have a home run as a pirate. 1-0 pitch. And Morno hits this one in the air to shallow left over toward the line. And Holiday manages to get underneath it and makes the catch for the out. Morno's now one for three, one out for the Pirates in the bottom of the sixth. This will bring up Marlon Berg. And now a left hander has joined Manus, Randy Choate. So Choate and Manus warming up for the Cardinals in the bullpen. A one out and one on. And Marlon Bird hoping to deliver again. He has five RBIs this postseason. Two more today. Here's the pitch coming to Marlon. Stretched by Kelly. He'll throw to first base and diving back is McCutcheon. The stolen base has not been a factor in this series unless you want to count the double steal by the Cardinals in the fifth. It was a strike him out, throw him out, but called incorrectly at third. Here's the pitch. And Bird lifts this one down the left field line. That's going to be in. Kutch is going to turn second. He heads for third. But Kutch will stop at third. Bird digging for second. A one out double for Marlon Bird. And the Pirates with runners at second and third and one out. Keep flying, Marlon. Just keep on flying. Ball in on him. He was able to get his hands in and be able to push that ball down the left field line. Way off the plate inside. Keep the hands in and let him fly. Arms go out, hands in, left field corner. Cardinal pitching coach Derek Lilliquist sent out to talk to Kelly. And Pedro Alvarez... Was that a tough day so far? He struck out twice. Listen to these fans and how they are getting on the Cardinal starter. Well, they all feel like it worked against Cueto. Right? Well, if you have two syllables in your last name, it makes for a nice chant. It does. Like it Cueto, does. Kelly, and then tomorrow it's Waka, by the way. Right. But it also works all right for Liriano. Liriano. <laughs> or Pedro. Pedro. Pedro right now. Well, right now. It always works. We'd love to see Pedro come through. 
Pedro's got runners at second and third, and you'd like to see him get a fly ball deep somewhere, deep enough to score McCutcheon, just one out. Cardinal infield will come in. And now that's dangerous for your health the way he hits the ball. They're going to walk Alvarez. Molina came out in front of home plate, held up four fingers, and they're going to walk Pedro and get to Russell Martin. So the second wide one in the glove of Molina. It's 2-0 to Alvarez. Thought they might pitch to Pedro here considering he has struck out twice. But Matheny has seen his power in the first two games. Homering in each. And he's not going to give Pedro a chance to connect. So he'll walk him with first base open. Yeah, could, could Pedro could possibly put the game away. This way they keep the double play in order. Well, and Russell Martin could too. Russell Martin oh, yeah. this year homered against the Cardinals more than any other player in Major League Baseball. He had six home runs against the Cardinals. So pick your poison here. And the Cardinals are going to talk it over. I want to make sure they've got, and that's, uh, they're going to talk it over while their pitching change is going to be made. And what they're going to do is uh, they'll go to Manus here against the right handed hitting Russell Martin and Mike Matheny. Who has developed a reputation quickly of being a Tony La Russa clone with the way that he will change pitchers, especially toward the end of ball games. And so the starter, Joe Kelly, is done. We've got a pitching ch looking at. He's got a, a youngster, a rookie, who throws a lot of ground balls. And so the plan that was played out by the Cardinals walk, Pedro Alvarez, go to a Ground ball pitcher hope to get the double play and get out of this mess. One out, bases loaded. The ground ball pitcher, Seth Manis, in there during the season. 66 appearances after being recalled late in April. 5 and 2, 232 ERA, a save. 62 innings with 65 hits given up. Just 13 walks, 35 strikeouts. He's looking for a ground ball. The Pirates are looking for something different. Now Manis gave up four home runs during the regular season in those 66 appearances. So the bases full of bucks, one out. Bottom of the sixth, 2 2 the score. Russell Martin is 0 for 2. He struck out twice. And Martin lifts this one into center field and deep. Deep enough to get McCutcheon in. Jay makes the catch. Cutch tags. Cutch will score. And the Pirates have the lead at 3 to 2. Russell Martin with a sacrifice fly and an RBI. Bucks back in front. Not waiting around. Plenty of room for Andrew and the Pirates up by a point. Still looking for more. Still looking for more. And that run charge to Joe Kelly. He is still responsible for the two men on base. So three earned runs to Kelly now. Or three runs, two of them earned, I should say. They've got one unearned run. And once again, a walk to Andrew McCutcheon turns into a Pirate run. And Kutch... Twice today has walked and scored and has reached base three times. And now Jose Tabata is going to pinch hit for Clint Barmas in the eighth spot. Pirates looking for some more offense with Marlon Bird, the runner at second base, and Pedro Alvarez at first. And Jose Tabata hit 282 during the regular season. Facing Manus and takes a strike on the inside edge of the plate. Oh, he'd love to catch a gap right now. Two outs. Pedro Alvarez can take all the room, all the lead he wants at first base. A double could get you two more. Nothing and one the count, the stretch. Here's the pitch. And that is low, one and one. Greg Brown will have the play-by-play -play the rest of the way, starting in the seventh inning. He'll rejoin Steve after this half inning here. Pirates hoping to extend this inning a little longer and add on. As they have retaken the lead here at three to two. More, more, more. 1-1 one, one to Tabata. Pitch was outside. That's where Molina had set up. And Manus hit the target, but it was well off the plate. Could not get Tabata to chase it. And now Manus falls behind Jose. Two balls and a strike. And trying to work him that way. The Cardinal outfield shaded over toward right field, not expecting Jose to pull the ball. 2-1. Brown ball to short. Cosma picks it up, whips it to second base. They get the force out of Alvarez there, but the Bucks get a run and take the lead on a sacrifice fly by Russell Martin. Scoring Andrew McCutcheon. Marlon Bird with a double in the inning. 
And after six full in game three of the National League Division. Switch, so Mer Jordy Mercer will lead off in the bottom of the seventh inning. Greg Brown now alongside Steve Blass here with the Bucks up by one. John Jay at the plate has grounded out, singled, and scored. He will be followed by Pete Cosma and then a pinch hitter for Seth Manis. The lefty pitcher to the left-handed batter, and it's high ball one. Welcome back, Greg. We got your lead here. Yeah, thank Skinny you. One. Thanks to you and Tim. That's all right. We'll take it. Well, he gave it away and then got it back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's hit out of play off to the left. I'll tell you, Steve, I was impressed with Joe Kelly. He wasn't rattled no. one little bit. No, no. He looked very mature out there. He, that, uh, he, he got in trouble a couple times. I think he's going to be around for a while. He's a tough customer. Yeah, pretty steady. One ball, one strike to count. Here's the pitch. It's inside. Two balls and a strike to count. Here's the pitch. And as a ground ball sharply hit, there's Mercer. He makes a nice play behind second, throws to first, and got him. Well done. There's the new shortstop. And the double switch, the little bit of a gamble, I'm sure. Clint Hurdle will be asked after the game about pinch hitting. Tabata looking for some more runs, but he takes out Barmas. But Mercer right there behind the second base back. And how big is that in a one-run game in the seventh inning? He had to turn completely around. You're kind of lining up your throw while you still got your back to the first baseman. Trying to anticipate where your target is going to be. He knows where it's going to be, but he wants the line of fire in that direction, and it was right on the money. Here's Pete Cosma. He has doubled and walked. Watson delivers. And off of Martin's mitt, the ball rolls all the way to the Pirates dugout, and it's called strike from Jerry Lane. I believe, hmm. yeah. Well, I, I think so. I think he put up his right hand. Now, the scoreboard and the national telecast shows ball one. A little strange. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off the end of the bat. I could have sworn Jerry Lane put up his right hand. Maybe not. Uh, the dugout is checking with Jerry Lane right now. Yeah. It, hold on. Well, I guess it's still one and one. So far. <laughs> Stay tuned. I could have sworn he put up his right. Yep, it's 0-2. Yeah. It is 0-2. Yeah, there you go. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Inside, fastball missed, one ball and two strikes. They almost had a double down strikeout. One and two the count. Tony Watson at the letters, or at the belt, and the 1-2. And a line drive base hit into center field for Cosma. One out single. Well, Cosma on base three straight times. And we'll have a pinch hitter for Seth Manis. It's Shane Robinson. Right-handed batter. Here in the seventh inning with the Pirates leading 3-2. Shane Robinson, who hit 250 with a couple of home runs this season, steps to the plate. Batting for Minas. Watson at the belt and the pitch to Robinson. And there's a strike. 95 miles per hour right at the knees on the corner of the plate. 0-1 on Shane Robinson. 144 at-bats during the season. He was 5 out of 18 as a pinch hitter. Tony Watson sets. And the pitch. Bouncing ball towards short. Mercer throw to second for one and on to first. They will not double up Robinson. They'll take the out at second and two away. Take outs when you can get them. Not really a double play ball. No. Mercer did what he could as did Walker. And Mercer had to move a little to his right. Ball wasn't hit all that sharply. And now the batter, Matt Carpenter, 
who was 0 for 2 and that was hit by a pitch against Francisco Liriano. Pirates lead 3 to 2. Cardinals bat top of the seventh inning at PNC Park. Shane Robinson now at first. Justin Morneau holds him on. The left handed hitter Matt Carpenter against the lefty Watson. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball one. Robinson uh, bouncing around there like he might have had a notion to take off for second base. And the Cardinals painfully aware of how strong the Pirate bullpen is. They might try to steal a base. They pulled off a double steal in the fifth inning. That led to two runs. One ball, no strikes. And a throw to first base. Robinson returns standing without a tag. Pedro Alvarez is uh, guarding that line at third base. Shortstop Mercer over towards second. Not quite behind the bag. There's a gigantic hole for Carpenter on the left side. And he'll go that way. Beltran on deck. One ball, no strikes. Another throw over. And again, Robinson returns standing up. The replays showed that Really, the Pirates did not get a call they should have gotten on that double steal. John Jay mm. was out. Alvarez tagged his foot yep. before he reached the bag. That was a huge non-call that went the way of the Cardinals. And the runner does go. And it's slapped down by Tony Watson. He recovers, picks it, and throws and gets Shane Robinson. Watson got his glove down, deflected it toward third. Went over, picked it up, and threw him out. Shane Robinson took off for second, but Matt Carpenter has retired 1-3. Seventh inning stretch. 7-7 and seven with a 4.02 ERA and 75 trips. It's like John Axford, the former closer, has kind of gotten together with the St. Louis Cardinals. And Pirates will be trying to add on, starting with Jordy Mercer. Mercer's first uh, at-bat of the ball game. Made a nice play at the top of the seventh inning. And uh, now it is Mark Melanson starting to loosen up for the Pirates. And of course, uh, then it would be Jason Grilly. And the Pirates would really like to add on. Currently up by just one. Joe Kelly, five and a third. Three runs, two earned. Seth Minas, two outs in the sixth. Now Axford. Francisco Liriano, six innings, three hits, two runs. And Tony Watson, a scoreless top of the seven. Kind of interesting how uh, the Pirates had different people warming up in different innings leading up to this sequence. And Zaro for a while, and then Wilson, and then they get into the sequence that they want. Watson, Melanson, Grilly. So, facing the veteran John Axford now is Jordy Mercer. Mercer was one for three with an intentional walk on Friday in St. Louis. He started that game against Lance Lynn. Six five, two hundred twenty pound veteran John Axford facing Jordy Mercer. Just now stepping into the batter's box. I think he might have been told by Jerry Lane to hold up for a minute for television, and now ready to go. Axford delivers to Mercer. And a first pitch strike. Starling Marte to follow. And then Neil Walker. And the pitch. Check swing. The ball appeal to first base. Umpire Sam Holbrook palms down. No swing. That was 96 miles per hour. From this 30-year-old Canadian native John Axford. And you don't usually see those cardinal stripes on the uh, stockings, but John Axford shows them. One one pitch is down low. Two and one on Jordy Mercer. Just a couple of at bats previously against Axford. 0 for two. Two one. Fouled up against the screen. The two three four hitters in the lineup. For the Cardinals is due up in the eighth inning. Actually, uh, with that conversation, we thought we had an easy fifth when uh, Luriano is going to face the seven, eight, nine. Yeah. That didn't work out as well as we had hoped. You never know. Two balls, two strikes, the pitch. Just missed away. It's three and two. Good 
13 appearances with the Cardinals, covering 10 innings. Three walks, 11 strikeouts. He walked 26 and 65 innings with the Brewers this year. Their yep. former closer, 3-2 yep. pitch. And a fly ball to center field, back several steps, Jay, and Jay's under it makes the catch. Also gave up 10 home runs coming out of that Milwaukee bullpen. One up, one down in the bottom of the seventh inning. And here's Starling Marte, 0 for 3. And he has fly to the warning track, bounced to third, and fouled out to first baseman Matt Adams. Marte has faced John Axford twice, has two hits, one of them a homer. One out, bottom of the seventh, the pitch. Outside, ball one. Pittsburgh up 3-2. Pirates batting bottom of the seventh inning from PNC Park. Axford's 1-0. And that's a ball. Now it goes to two balls and no strikes. Carlos Martinez loosening in the bullpen for St. Louis. Here's the pitch and a shot to short. Picked by Cosma and on to first to retire Starling Marte. Well, we thought we'd see a lot of pitching this afternoon, and we have. Pirates with a slight edge, but it was Liriano again going deep into the ball game, and he is the pitcher of record. Neil Walker comes to the plate 0 for 3. A strikeout and two ground balls to first. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball to first. Three times he'll be retired by the first baseman. This time an assist to first. The play goes 3-1. And that will do it. The Pirates go down in order for just the second time tonight. Mark the Shark looks like he's going to be coming on. Inning with a one-run lead. And he'll face Beltran, Holiday, Molina. Got his work cut out for him. And before Carlos Beltran steps in, we'll step aside for station identification. We invite you to place a deposit for your 2014 Pirate season tickets from full season to half and 20 game plans. There's a plan that works perfectly for your needs. Enjoy a great benefit. All the benefits of being a season ticket holder all year long. To place your deposit, go to pirates.com slash deposit. We pause on the Pirates Baseball Network. Carlos Beltran has been on base twice today. He had the two-run single up the middle in the fifth that tied the game. Pirates untied it in the sixth. Beltran walked his second time to the plate. He bounced out in the first inning. He is three for seven in his career against Mark Melanson. That's a 429 average. Now batting left-handed for the first time tonight. Mark Melanson against Carlos Beltran. Here's the pitch. And it is strike one. Center cut. Melanson got Beltran to ground out in the eighth inning on Friday in that 7-1 Bucko victory. 0-1. The pitch to Beltran. And a fly ball deep to right center field. Carlos Beltran has done it again. He has homer to tie it up in the eighth inning. Just incredible what he does in the postseason. Carlos Beltran has tied this game at three to quiet this crowd at PNC Park. Crushes it over the right center field wall. It's three all. Just like that. Beltran's second home run of the series. And a replay showing that ball right in that power zone. And simply did not miss it. Well, it's all tied up at three. Nobody out in the eighth. And now the batter, Matt Holliday. He takes high ball one. Holliday one for five in his career against Mark Melanson. Well, you get tested a lot of different ways now. You give up the tying home run, and uh, you got to get it back together. Can't do anything about that one and get back to work. And it's a tough challenge. It's hard to swallow hard after... And give up that long ball. Pitch outside. It's one ball and one strike now on Matt Holliday. 
Mark Melanson's 1-1. Low and away. Holiday has bounced out and flied out to the wall once and flied out in front of the warning track. His other at bat. He is 0 for 3. It is 3-3 in the 8th. So hard to collect yourself. So important for Mark to do that right now. 2-1 pitch outside. It is 3-1. Lanson pitched six scoreless innings against the Cardinals during the regular season. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Strike is called as a holiday and started to jog toward first. Took a couple of steps. Held on to the bat. It's now 3-2 and two on Matt Holiday. Mm, Holiday had a had a beef on that one. Full count. Home run for Beltron leading off the eighth has tied the game at three. Here's the pitch. And a ground ball right side off of Morneau. Deflects toward Walker. On to Melanson. Out at first base. Whoa. Holiday doesn't agree. Here comes Mike Matheny. He's going to sprint toward the first base umpire, Sam Holbrook. Bucks might have gotten a call. What a play by Walker and Melanson. Yep, Melanson didn't give up on the play after it was deflected by Morneau. Pirates fortunate that it went toward Walker. Well, I think it was a good call by yep. Sam Holbrook. They really slowed it down on television. It was an excellent call on a really heads-up play. You're exactly right. Heads-up by Melanson not to give up on the play after the deflection. Many times a pitcher will just slow down. He didn't. And Neil Walker not giving up on the play. First out in the 8-3-3 three, mm. three game. Yadier Molina at the plate 0 for 3. 3-4 three to, to 1. This ball's fouled off to the right, out of play, well back. And then 300 level. First base way, 0-1 on Molina. But that, that general shift of momentum, the, the Cardinals facing that real good bullpen sequence. you got to believe they were a little flat, but they get the home run. Now it almost shifts toward them. 0-1. And a line drive base hit into right field. Yadier Molina singles to right. And Beltran homers to tie the game. And then now Holiday and Molina, both right hand hitters going the other way. That is, we've seen a lot of uh, opposing hitters do that recently against Melanson. That was, the, that was the approach late in the season. Push the ball to right field. Push the ball to right field. Here is David Fries. He has struck out, lined out to the warning track in right field, and lined out to left fielder Starling Marte. Let's see if Melanson comes inside just to, to get some definition so they can't get out there, dive out that way. Ground ball stabbed by Melanson. Throw to second for one. On to first and a double play. Morneau came off the bag. The throw pulled him off first, but he's able to apply the tag of Fries going by. And Justin Wilson had started to loosen in the Pirates' bullpen to face Matt Adams. He won't have to do that. Wow, what a quick release by Melanson. Comfortably giving a perfect feed to second base. The seventh. And we are back even. We were tied 2-2, now it's 3-3. Another one of these young uh, rookie pitchers. Carlos Martinez from the Dominican Republic turned 22 years old on the 21st of September. It's a double switch. Daniel Descalzo takes over at third base. He bats in the ninth spot. Martinez hits in Freeze's spot of the batting order. Freeze made uh, the final outs in the top of the eighth. And Andrew McCutcheon leads off and fouls it back up against the screen. Kevin Segrist, a left-hander, is loosening in the bullpen. So Martinez might be facing one batter. Well, Segrist uh, could be looking toward Alvarez. The Pirates have the left-right-left -left combo following McCutcheon. Here is the 0-1 offering. And it's down low. Martinez pitched a 1-2-3 eighth inning on Thursday. Faced Russell Martin, Clint Barmas, and Jordy Mercer in St. Louis. And he's yet to face McCutcheon. One ball, one strike. It is a tie game, bottom of the eighth inning. Here's the 1-1, and that is low. 
Now Molina wants to go out and talk to his young pitcher. Nine walks, one intentional in his 28 innings during the regular season at the big league level. Well, Hard throwing righty. Get Andrew on, on base. That would be huge, huge right now. Two and one. Molina back behind the plate. Putting down the signs. Here's the wind in the 2 1. Line drive left field. It is a fair ball. Stays inside the corner. McCutcheon into second base. A leadoff double in the bottom of the eighth inning. And we just got 40,000 plus back. Andrew McCutcheon. Who else? McCutcheon lines a double into the left field corner. Now it's Justin Morneau. With Marlon Bird on deck. The rookie who turned 22 in September. Carlos Martinez delivers. And a shot towards short. And McCutcheon breaks for third. And he'll be out by a mile. Oh, my goodness. Andrew McCutcheon. Ball hit right to Cosma. Breaks for third. And he's tagged out easily. Can't explain that one. No. 6-5 on the put out. Huh. One away. Josh Harrison is going to come on and pinch run for Morneau. Just hit right on the button, but right at the shortstop. Just. Mm. Mm. Well, now Harrison pinch running with Marlon Bird at the plate. Does Josh take off right here? Bird is two for three. A two-run single in the first, doubled in the sixth. Here's the pitch. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. Segrist, the lefty, is ready, assuming he would face Alvarez. Unless uh, Martinez gets a bird to hit into a double play to end the inning. They won't have to worry about that here in the eighth. 0 oh 1. Here's the pitch. Check swing and a ball down low into the dirt. I'm thinking uh, originally that Mike Matheny might have left Martinez in one batter too long, just facing one batter, that that decision to bring him in might have cost him after Andrew hit the double. Well, McCutcheon doubles, but is thrown out at third base on the ground ball to the shortstop. So Harrison pinch running for Morno. At first, with one out, tie game, eighth inning. Here's the pitch, and Bird lays off that one. It's down low. Two and one. Now would he go? Martinez, 28 innings, 24 strikeouts. Well, pretty good ratio. You're looking for contact or non-contact. Swing and miss numbers. Two and one. Here's the stretch. The pitch, swing and a miss. And it is two and two. He has yet to throw a bird a strike. Ball was downstairs, out of the zone. Two and two. Marlon Bird at the plate, Pedro Alvarez on deck. Bottom of the eighth tie game. Here's the pitch. And a foul off to the right out of play. Ball was on the another, inside another corner. Ball. Yeah, yeah, at best. Been all over the place. Two and two on Marlon Bird. Bird with uh, five hits and 15 at bats in the postseason. Still two and two. Carlos Martinez for the Cardinals with a 2 2 pitch. Missed inside and maybe a flinch from Molina and home plate umpire Jerry Lane. It's three and two. And bullpen phone buzzing in the Cardinal dugout. 
Three balls, two strikes on Bird. Have to figure Harrison is on the move now on this pitch. The stretch by Martinez. Here's the 3-2 runner goes. Pitch is fouled back up against the screen. Every time you look at Marlon Bird, he's creating action. Three balls, two strikes on Marlon Bird. A leadoff double by McCutcheon here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Morneau hit a ball right at the shortstop, Pete Cosma, who threw on to third to get McCutcheon. Harrison pinch running for Morneau. The 3-2 pitch will have to wait as the throw to first base does not get Harrison. He dives back ahead of Matt Adams' tag. But, uh, pretty, quick, pretty quick move by Martinez over there. Six foot, 185 pounds. Carlos Martinez right into the fire in the playoffs. Here's the 3 2 pitch inside, and the Bucks have runners at first and second. Pedro Alvarez is going to be coming to the plate, but he's not going to be facing Carlos Martinez. Mike Matheny will be coming out any moment. Maybe waiting for Alvarez to get just about to the left hand hitter's batter's box before he comes up the dugout steps. Making certain that Segrist is ready. And here comes the manager of the Cardinals, Mike Bethini. Mike Bethini is making a pitching change, our LaRoche College pitching change. LaRoche College to make it to the top of your field. Follow our lead at laroche.edu. Pirates have runners at first and second. Season. Alvarez is 0 for 4 against this Buffalo, New York native, Kevin Segrist. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Alvarez faced Segrist on Friday at Bush Stadium and grounded out. It was a, a, a positive out for Alvarez as he moved Marlon Bird to third base in the seventh inning. Pulled the ball, allowing Bird to move up 90 feet, and Bird would score on a sacrifice fly. That was on Friday at Bush Stadium. Well, Pedro Alvarez will be facing this rookie lefty Kevin Segrist with Josh Harrison, the pinch runner at second, Marlon Bird at first, and a tie game, three all in the bottom of the eighth inning. Segrist held left-handed hitters to a 118 batting average during the regular year, eight for 68 with 11 walks. ERA of 0.45. And Alvarez hit 180 against lefties during the regular season. And got better and more comfortable as the year went on. Russell Martin is on deck. Any kind of hit here, any kind. Bloop. Bloop, rocket, blast. Anything, yep. Worm burner, whatever you want to do. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. 96 miles per hour. Jason Grilly is up in the Pirates' bullpen. Three runs, six hits for St. Louis. Three runs, six hits for Pittsburgh. Kevin Segrist, 6'5", 215 pounds. Left on left. Here's the stretch. And a turn, no throw towards second. Now I go back to... Um... Andrew leading off and, and Martinez being in there. And then af after Andrew hit the double, I was wondering whether Segris was going to come in right there. Left-hander Morneau. We left him in. Here's the stretch. And the 0-1. Missed outside. Segris was a 41st round pick in 2007. This arm, oh, the 1,235th player chosen in that draft. Somebody saw something. Yep. Uh, Palm Beach Community College. One ball, one strike on Alvarez. Harrison at second. Bird at first. 3-3 three, three game. Bottom of the eighth inning. One out, the 1-1. One, one. Round ball. Right side, a base hit. Josh Harrison waved home. Beltran's throw will come toward third. Bird is going to be there. Pedro delivers. You big bull. Just gave the Bucks a 4-3 lead in the eighth inning. Off the lefty.
they are loving their Pedro. Right now, Pedro owns Pittsburgh. Pedro Alvarez, a ground single to right field. Scores Harrison from second. Bird goes to third. The throw from Beltran off the mark. And the Pirates lead 4-3 to three in the eighth. And look for more with Russell Martin at the plate. Martin 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. And the squeeze is on. And a foul ball. And Molina took a shot. Pirates trying to get one cheap. And the Cardinal catcher is hurt. With a foul ball off his right hand. One of the trainers and Mike Matheny are out checking on their all-star gold glove. And many believe MVP of this team. And they took it off. Off the wrist it looked like. Uh, they, the left wrist. His uh, mitt is off at the moment. And the Cardinals and Pirates trying to trade knockout punches here in the eighth inning. And the Pirates have landed the biggest blow in spite of Beltron's home run. As their base hit has gotten in the lead. They are still checking on Yadier Molina. He's clenching a clenched fist and he taps his manager on the leg saying, I'm fine. He's, he's kind of controlling the whole situation. Yeah. So a ball that was fouled off of Molina. The squeeze was on. Bird was breaking for the plate. Russell Martin fouled it off. 0-1 on the Pirates catcher. Bird at third. Alvarez at first. The Pirates have just taken a 4-3 lead. And it's always the element of surprise, but nothing would be more surprising if they tried it again. Nobody, absolutely nobody thinking about it now. Infield is in. And a pitch... For a strike on the outside corner, it's 0-2, 97 miles per hour. Martin didn't agree with the call. But it is very hard to see 97 miles an hour. Russell Martin hit just 194 against left-handed pitching this season. 0-2. Here's the pitch. Fouled straight back. More heat. 0-2 oh, on Martin. Many times, Major League catchers can catch up to 97, 98, 99. But if it's in certain spots, you can't do anything with it. I mean, if it's right there, kind of up a little bit, you, you can run into that kind of speed. But when they place it somewhere other than right in the middle of the strike zone, it's almost impossible. 0-2. Oh, Segrist, the lefty, delivers to Martin. And it's high, not close. No subtlety there, just reaching back, trying to get more speed. Martin sacrifice fly in the sixth inning had given the Pirates a 3-2 lead. Our Allegheny Health Network game summary. Pirates scored two runs, one unearned in the first inning. Cardinals tied it in the fifth on a Beltron two-run single. One ball, two strikes the count on Martin. Here's the pitch. Swing the line drive, left field, a base hit. Bird can trot home. Russell Martin gives the Pirates a two-run lead in the eighth. Huh. You want some insurance? You got it. 5-3 Buccaneers. Alvarez stops at second. Day has turned into night, and a tie has turned into a lead. Gabby Sanchez will be announced as the pinch hitter. He bats for Melanson. What a grind in the bottom of the eighth after the disappointing play at third base when Andrew McCutcheon was out. What a comeback in this inning. Is Matheny going to let the lefty face Gabby Sanchez? I don't. I guess he is. Here's the pitch. And a pop-up going to be out of play behind home plate. There is a righty up in the bullpen. And Gabby Sanchez did a really nice job this season against left-handed pitching. He hit 333 against Southpaws. If a knockout punch has not 
yet been delivered. Gabby Sanchez could certainly do it with runners at first and second, one out, and the Pirates leading 5-3 to three in the bottom of the eighth inning. And two runs charged to Carlos Martinez. 0-1-1. Here's the pitch. Downstairs. Jordy Mercer on deck. So the Beltron single in the fifth brought home two to tie it. The sacrifice fly by Martin brought home McCutcheon in the sixth inning to give the Pirates the lead here in the top of the eighth inning. A leadoff home run by Beltron had tied it. The Bucks have gotten the lead back here with two and look for more. Bottom of the eighth. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Off speed pitch from Kevin Segrist. You have heard some noise here in the bottom of the eighth. And regardless of what happens with this at bat, you are going to hear some real thunder when you get a pirate reliever coming in out of the bullpen to work the ninth inning. You will hear it for Jason Grilly and then some. One ball, two strikes. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Ground ball, left side could be two. That's a five, four, and three double play. Segrist gets Gabby Sanchez to hit into a round the horn DP. And everybody up for their bucks as they pick up two in the bottom of the eighth inning. They pick up McCutcheon. They pick up Melanson. And it is grilled cheap. Encouraging things we saw on Friday in a 7-1 victory was Jason Grilly's ninth inning. It looked like the old Jason Grilly. Some snap on the fastball. He struck out three. He gave up a double to Matt Adams off the wall in that inning. And Adams is at the plate 0 for 3 tonight. Here's the pitch. And a first pitch strike. Started him off with a breaking ball. And we saw a lot of that breaking ball in that performance when he struck out the side in and around Matt Adams. Gabby Sanchez takes over at first base. Uh, really had the 95 at times 96 mile per hour fastball going. The other day, here's the 0-1. That's high. One ball and one strike. That was 93. Matt Adams, John Jay, Pete Cosma do up here in the ninth inning for St. Louis with the Pirates leading 5-3. to three, Needing three outs to take a two games to one lead in this best of five division series. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Pop up out of play. Alvarez playing shortstop, essentially. The shortstop, Mercer, swung over toward... The first base side of second, playing deep on the edge of the grass and out on the grass about 10 steps is Neil Walker. And not the 97, 98 mile an hour fastball, but enough on that foul, fastball to cause Matt Adams not to be able to catch up to it. It was late. One ball, two strikes to Matt Adams. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball toward left, slicing toward the seats. That's going to be out of play. Marte racing over into the corner, but it's out of play. And it remains a ball and two strikes on Slippery Rocks, Matt Adams. Another fastball that Adams didn't quite get to. Came closer to getting to it on that ball that was lifted with pretty good distance down the left field line. You wonder if Jason will come back to that breaking ball that he started out the at-bat with. Here's the stretch by Grilly. The one-two pitch. Swing and a fly ball. It's going to drop into left field for a base hit. Stayed with the fastball. Adams didn't get a lot of it, but he got enough to bring the tying run to home plate. A base hit for Adams to start the ninth. And it brings up John Jay, who tonight is one for three. And that fastball by Jason, way up high, up way up in the strike zone. And Adams was able to get enough of it. And really was able to strike out Jay on Friday to end the ball game. Jay is two for seven in his career against Grilly. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Jay looks at a strike. And there's the hook again. A leadoff hit for Matt Adams. And each man that comes to the plate represents the potential tying run in the ninth. 5-3, Pirates lead it. Nobody out. Really sets. Here's the 0-1. And a foul straight back. 
0-2, and, and that fastball just about 93. It's not what we saw on Friday in St. Louis, but it can be good enough. Nothing wrong with 93 miles an hour, nope. but nothing wrong with that hook either. Out in front, 0-2. Grilly against Jay. The stretch, the 0-2. Breaking ball in the dirt. It's a ball and two strikes on John Jay. He didn't budge. Pete Cosma on deck. Five runs, eight hits for Pittsburgh. Three runs, seven hits for St. Louis. One ball, two strikes. Really delivers. And a line drive caught by the shortstop. Mercer, and there is out number one. Adam scrambles back to the back, no throw. And once again, you go back to defensive positioning. And Mercer right there. It brings up Pete Cosma. And pretty much over. Jason Grilly's head, and Jordy was just shaded just enough up towards second base where it was a very comfortable play. Pete Cosma at the plate. He has been a nuisance tonight. He's doubled, walked, and singled. He has scored a run. He's stolen a base. Pete Cosma, who hit 175 against Pirates pitching this season, 217 overall in the major leagues this year, is at the plate with a runner at first and one out. Here's the pitch to Cosma, and a fly ball to center. McCutcheon will take a couple steps back. He's under it. He squeezes it. Two away. Oh, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Daniel Descalzo comes to the plate his first at bat of the night. 0 for 2 plus a walk in his career against Jason Grilly. He's a left-handed batter. Came on the double switch in the bottom of the eighth to play third. Daniel Descalzo. Was 0 for 3 on Friday. Was 0 for 4 on Thursday. Hit 238 during the regular season. They're all up. Here's the stretch, the pitch. Bouncing ball to first. Sanchez has it. Steps on the bag. Pirates a game away from the National League Championship Series. Raise it high. Raise the Jolly Roger. The Buccos defeat the Redbirds. Listen to them go crazy. Boy, did they work hard for this one. They had it. It got away. They had it again. It got away. And they got it again. And it was enough. What a blue collar win for these Pittsburgh Pirates. They're grinders. Pirates are heading toward their dugout. And this record crowd of 40,489. No, they've not budged. They have not budged. They're waving their towels. They're waving the Jolly Rogers. And they know now that the Pirates are a win away from going to the National League Championship Series. What a ride. What a ride for these Pittsburgh Pirates. They won't work harder to win a ball game than they just did against the St. Louis Cardinals. The final score in Game 3 of this Best of 5 National League Division Series. The Pittsburgh Pirates 5, the St. Louis Cardinals 3.